Decoupaging anything that's round can be difficult, especially eggs. However, this video, I'm gonna share a few tips and tricks with you to help you create some decoupage eggs that you'll be happy to display in your home this year. As for the medium we're going to be using today, pick one, my friends, pick one. I have been using this on and off for over a year and really like its application. I'm fairly new to liquid patina, but have loved my results with this as well. It always dries so smooth. I didn't have this up there with the others, but I've even used tacky glue in a pinch. As long as you're not doing large projects and you just want to get a quick, small section put onto something, this actually works pretty well also to attach your pieces as a medium. Recently in my comments, I have had a lot of people saying that they don't like using Mod Podge and to each their own. Use whatever works for you. I even had someone comment recently that Mod Podge was too expensive for them. They used School Elmer's glue. And my friends, in case you don't know, I do have a browsing channel to help you shop and save and budget and plan for your DIYs because you can actually get Mod Podge in the smaller bottles at Dollar Tree. So if you're always worried about your budget like I am, check me out over there. I try to help you stay budget friendly. And me too, because girl has a craft hoarding problem, you know? I'm just letting you know. And by all means, use whatever works for you. Please do not ever feel, I say this all the time in my content, do not ever feel like you have to be stuck with whatever I'm using. Take my ideas, remix it with what works for you and your home decor. In this chatting and crafting series, we mostly focus on decoupage crafts. In doing so, we use a lot of TDS, the DIYstruggle.com, items you can get from there. This is TDS decoupage paper. It is a wraps. That's what it is called. If you're interested, that's where you can purchase this. But also please keep in mind that you do not have to purchase this decoupage paper to take any of these ideas or the tips and tricks that are always included in these chatting and crafting videos to your own projects at home using whatever paper, napkins that works best for you, your home, and your decor. Check these gems out, my friends. Now, if you want to use real eggs, I know old school ways, you know, people actually like would suck the yolk out of the eggs and all that. Listen, I'm, I'm not that progressive, okay? <laughs> or should I say I'm not that old school? We're not going to be doing none of that. I picked these up from Hobby Lobby. If you were hanging out with me on my browsing channel, you see me grab these and you also seen my joy when they were 40% off, okay? I thought these were steel, they're little plastic eggs. And also guess what? I won't really have to be painting these. However, you can grab these at Dollar Tree. You will have to paint these. I'm going to not use these today <laughs> because I don't wanna have to paint them. But feel free to get whatever eggs you, they even have wood ones that you can use as well. So if you get wood eggs and you want to repaint those, go right ahead. Today, we're just going to be using these, but I wanted to share these for those that don't have a Hobby Lobby local to them. You can just paint these suckers up with some chalk paint and be good to go and get the same end results as these. I cannot even tell you how excited I am to use this paper it was one of the things I've, I've made a lot of decoupage paper, but I got to be honest with you. It was one of the papers that as I was creating it, I was so excited thinking about making eggs. And one of the reasons I was so excited about making it is because one of my favorite childhood memories that I have is dyeing eggs with my grandmother. And she would have like, and there was a lot of grand grandkids. <laughs> she would have a dozen of eggs for each of us. And it just holds such a sweet little memory for me. So I was really excited. And I think I've even talked about in my other videos that I couldn't wait to do these egg wraps. So I'm really excited to just sit here and craft with y'all and run my mouth. <laughs> Feel free to use your water. Feel free to tear these, whatever you want to do. I'm basically just keeping these in place and I am going to cut this whole paper completely up into little rectangles. Mm -hmm. 
Let's address keeping the eggs in place because first and foremost, if you've never really decoupaged eggs, a pain is this. <laughs> it's just going to wobble all over on you and it's not going to hold still. So one thing that you could do is create yourself a little fluffy base, wrap it with saran wrap, and then it's going to nestle right down in that. And that's fine. I tend to find that if the pieces aren't completely dry, if you're painting them, that paint will stick to the saran wrap, that if you have too much Mod Podge on the piece, it could stick to it, especially if you're doing a napkin, okay? The napkin can stick to the saran wrap and it is possible little sections of the napkin can pull off, especially if you instantly go right over your design and then it touches the cling wrap, then there's a little bubble, it will pop off. I hope that makes sense, I've had that happen to me before. What I like to do, and you, oh, another tip, we're not gonna do that, I don't know where one is. Dollar Tree has candle holders, you know, the little candle pieces, you can just sit them right on top of there. Another little trick, see these little rings from Dollar Tree? These are so awesome, because you can really move these around while you're decoupaging. These you can grab from Dollar Tree. They're just little rings, they come in a pack, but it moves all over the place. And if you have a bunch of them, you can set it just like this and move it over there while it dries. So I'm gonna show you how to maximize your design with your egg and not completely screw up the design, as well as show you what it looks like when you try to wrap this all around an egg just by itself. As you can see, wrapping the egg completely is almost impossible with your design. You can get it there, but it's a little messy. So I'm gonna show you how to really maximize your design and stop all of this excess overfold. Now that we have the how difficult it can be to just wrap these suckers completely around the egg done, I'm gonna show you what I do. Most of the time, you're only gonna show one part of your egg anyway. So what I like to do is to put just one side down and then paint over it so it laps and look like one piece from the back to the front. So I'm going to take these and just tear. You can obviously use whatever method you want of tearing your paper. Some water on a brush would be completely fine. I'm going to make sure that I tear enough that it is going to cover most of the front of our egg. And the trick to this really is cutting as you go. You're gonna need a pair of scissors. They don't have to be that big, my friends. They don't have to be that big. We're gonna put a healthy amount of Mod Podge on our egg. Not too much. If you're using a napkin, you're gonna to wanna to definitely be mindful of this. And when you're using full patterns like this, it's more difficult than if you're just using little sections. If you're just using little sections, you can cut little section by little section and decoupage your egg, just like putting a piece here, putting a piece there. But if you're doing a section like this, it can be rather tricky, but it gives you a really cool look. And these plop in really well with fully painted color eggs or eggs that just have like a couple little butterflies, a couple little flowers plopped on them, whatever fits your home decor. So first I got our Mod Podge all on here nice and healthy. Now I'm going to take our paper and put it right in the center and just kind of press it down. A little sticky, hold on a minute. Gotta be mindful of how sticky your fingers are because if they're really sticky and you're trying to press on the paper, that paper is gonna to stick to your fingers, so keep that in mind too. So I'm just gonna start kind of pressing this down, making sure we're being mindful of the wrinkles, seeing where the paper starts to kind of break and I noticed there's one here, so I'm just gonna take the scissors and snip. And I'm gonna get a fold. And then I'm gonna snip again over here. And you're really gonna wanna do this with the whole 
piece. After you have your center in there, taking your scissors and just kind of going around looking to where you can see that there's like a little bulge in your design is going to help you lay this down. And then as you go, you're going to Mod Podge and put it down. Mod Podge and put it down or press it down. You go in one little section. I like to kind of do two sections at once. Mostly because you're going to be putting them down together. So I'm going to put this one down first. This piece is already naturally laying underneath of that one. So I'm going to apply this one. And you can see there's minimal wrinkles in doing that since we already sliced it. And our center doesn't really have any wrinkles except for where it gets to the edge. And we're going to come back in with some more Mod Podge and gently press. You'll see it seeps out and it's okay. Paper does really well with that. I'm going to put a little bit of Mod Podge under the section next to it. And then just keep going around. And this is how I'm going to decoupage every single one of our eggs. Press in the center first, get your pattern exactly where you want, and then you're going to cut with the scissors as you go and you're going to Mod Podge as you go and press down gently. When this egg, I cut the decoupage paper as I went. Instead of applying it in the center and then cutting all the little sections around and then putting it down, I decided to attach the center, decoupage a little piece, cut a little piece, decoupage a little piece, cut a little piece. This way you can see actually where the paper is folding and get an even better hold. Just wanna give you another option for you to be able to do this at home. Be mindful that as you're decoupaging like this, and since it's a round item, your finger placement matters. So if you're getting Mod Podge on your fingers, they will tend to get sticky and it's possible they could tear your paper. I decided to come in and put a back on this one, just so I could share with you that you're going to have a space if you try to come on with the patterns and do a front and do a back. You'll have a gap in here. And if you're not, it's a little sloppy. Okay, I rushed this one. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, we got to get this in. So I'm trying to give you guys as many examples as possible. But the cool thing with this is, is you can come back over with a paint and pop this in here and then put a little bow tie around it. And no one's going to know that you either mess this up or the pattern doesn't align up correctly. And I love showing you guys little tips like this because we all make mistakes or we just are in a hurry and we're trying to create something cute and we're like, oh no. So yes, if there's gapping here and you want to be able to fix it, let's go ahead and fix it and turn this sucker into a cute little piece. You can use some paint. You can use some ribbon. I'm going to use my go-to and I'm just going to take some of my Dixie Belle gilding wax. This is in the gold and we're going to plop this right around the edge. I feel like the gold will kind of blend in really well because we have those lines here. And we're just going to go around the edge. And then we're going to get a little piece of twine or a piece of ribbon or a piece of yarn and wrap around the center. And this is kind of just going to fix our little gap here, fix our little spacing and make our egg look super cute, like we meant to do all of that. The fun thing about the wax is you can actually take it over different sections, not with a paintbrush, you get too much, and it will bring out some of those wrinkles and look really cool as well. You cannot get this, obviously, doing that if you're just tying ribbon around the edge, which is another way to adjust for that but see how having it really dark on the end where your little space was it kind of blends it all together and then you're gonna just distress over the egg tying it all together and I might use a little piece of ribbon 
I have these really cute little purple flowers. I picked these up from like Michael's Hobby Lobby if you guys aren't familiar with where to grab some of these at. That's where I get these. And I'm going to use a little bit of tacky glue just to put on here and attach our little flower. Just some little extra on here. And how cute did that turn out? Don't ever let anybody tell you if you're messing up your decoupage that you can't do little things to just add a bit of love in there and fix it. My egg's completely dry, so now I'm just gonna take some chalk paint, some black chalk paint. This is Waverly chalk paint. Use whatever you want. And I'm going to go right around the edge and butt up to that decoupage, painting slightly over the line, just so it's all uniformed. I put two coats on the back of this. You put as many coats as you want, and it really just ties the whole front of the decoupage piece together and the back side. It looks so pretty. Choose whatever color paint you want that works with the design that you're putting on the front of your egg. And also keep in mind that it is a little bit more difficult doing sections like this than taking tiny little pieces and applying it to eggs. So if you're not a seasoned pro at decoupage, be a little bit mindful because patience is key doing this, especially because it's a round item. Hopefully watching me make mistakes on purpose to give you guys more information helps build your confidence up with your next decoupage craft. I hope you enjoyed all these projects today. As always, thank you all so much for hanging out with me today and until next time.